Hello and welcome to this video of the course Answer Set Solving in Practice, where we are going to do this exercise 1D on Clark's completion and loop formulas. Here we have this logic program P, and the first part is to find the Clark's completion of the program. Now here I have copied the program, and let's write here just the Clark's completion. Then for the atom A, we have these two bodies. Then we write a if on if b and not f o e. Now for b there's only one rule, so then we will do this, putting here a conjunction b if and on if a and c. For c we have d and not a. Then we do the equivalence like this and replace the comma by a conjunction. So C, if and only if, D and not E. Then for D, we just have these rules. We have D, if and only if, not F. And similarly for D, we have E, if and only if, not F. And then remember also to add the equivalence for the F, because we have that F, if and only if, false, because there is no body that can give us the F. Good, so this is the Clark's completion. Now we have to find the dependence, positive atom, dependency graph, the loops, and the loop formulas. So then for the graph, let's see here we have an edge from A to B. And we are going to have one edge also from E to A. So I already write it here so that it looks nice, right? We have for these two, those two edges. Now we have B from A and from C. So I put here the other uh, arrow and I also add here C. And then here C if D. And what else? We have the E if F from there. Good, and this looks like it. Now, uh, well, what you can do is just to eliminate the negative and then check here. You can also then, there's nothing coming from here, and then check that we have the B if A, E, so from B to A, from E to A, from A to B, and from C to B, and from D to C, and from F to E, right? And you can also check saying that there is there must be one edge, two, three, four, five, and six edges, right? And we have one, two, three, four, five, and six edges. But it's good that you do this test because um, it can be the case that you just make some some small mistakes mistake in between. Okay, so let's just write it also mathematically. So then the edge has the atom, has the atoms A, B, C, D, E. Sorry, the, the graph has the atom, these atoms. And now we have the edges from B to A, then from E to A, then from A to B, and also from C to B, and from D to C, and from F. To e. Good. Actually, we writing this is easier just to write it looking at the program, right? Because it's basically just rewriting the the positive the the positive body with the head. So the positive literals in the body with the head in each of these of the rules, right? Okay. Nice, so then we are done with this part, we have to find the loops. So here from the D, I cannot get back to the D. From the C, I can come to here, but there is no way coming back. But from the D, I can go back to the A and then come back. So then there's a loop. And then I can go from the A to the B and then come back. So then this is clearly a loop. And then from the F, I cannot get back to itself. From the E, I can go here, but I cannot go back. Then this is the only loop that we have. And we represent it by the set of atoms that belong to it. And now the loop formula. So we have to say that if A or B hold, right? Because we only care about this loop. So if A or B hold, 
Um, these are the rules. We look at the rules for A and B. Now we have to see which belong to the external support. So this is which of the rules that can give us A or B do not use A or B. And then it's only this one, right? This uses the B, this uses the A. Then what we know is that if one of them holds, then this rule must, uh, this rule must hold, okay? Then E holds. Right, because the idea intuitively is that if, if E doesn't hold, then we don't have this rule. So then to have A, we need to have B, but to have B, we must have A. So then there is no way to prove any of them without using them. So then they cannot belong to a stable model. That's why we can say that if some of them holds, E must hold, right? Because again, if E doesn't hold, we cannot use this rule. So we can only derive A or B using the other. Then there's no, um, uh, there's no real way to derive it. There's no way they can be in a stable model. Nice. Okay. This is explained much better by toasting in the, in the videos. I just wanted to give a, a quick look, a quick summary about it. Nice. Okay. Then it's the moment now to, to find the supported models. And for this, we come to the, to the completion formula. Let's just start reasoning about it. So F has to be false. So F has to be false. And then we have that uh, if F is false, no, so E must have the same truth value as F. So if F is false, then E is also false, right? Because if E was true, then, then F would also be true. And uh, Okay, then if we have not F, then we must have the D. So D has to be true. Then we have here these two false, and this is true. Now for the C, we have that D holds, and not E also holds, hence C must hold. And now here we have that the C holds, but the A we still do not know. And here we have that not F holds, E does not hold, so then basically we are left with here the B and here the A. We know that this holds, so we can simplify it like this. We can simplify it like this. We can get rid of it. So basically we have A if and only if B and B if and only if A, right? So if you look at this, then you know that this means that A and B are equivalent. A and B have the same value. So now either A is true and B is true or B is false and A is false. So we could just start here the case with A, B and with not A, not B, right? But now to make things even simpler for you, what we could do also do is to reason by cases and say, okay, this I know that if there's any supported model, it must satisfy these literals. But now about A and B, I'm not sure. So let's reason by cases. So let's see what happens, whether there's some supported model without the A or with the A. So without the A, then if I don't have the A, um, then I should not have the B. Otherwise, that equivalence is not satisfied. And uh, okay, and on the other side, if I have the A, then I must have the B. Or similarly here from this other place, if I have the A, I must have the B. And now quickly we can check now whether these two supported models satisfy again all the, all the formulas. So, um, well, first we can just check these three with respect to this one. So here, this is false, this is false, this is false, this is false, this is true, this is true. D and not E is true, C is true, right? So what we are saying is that the right side is equivalent to the to the left side. So if the right side, uh, uh, if this part is false, then this part should also be false. If this part is false, this should also be false. If this is um, true, this should also be true. And if this is true, this should also be true. And now here, if we go to the left side, we have that this part is false because we have not A, and this part is false because we have not A, not B. Good. And here, if we have not B, 
this part is false and this part is also false. And if we go through this other side, we have that then this part is true and this part is also true. And this part now is true and this part is also true. So all the equivalence, so the truth value of the right sides is the same as the truth values of the corresponding left sides. So then we have checked that this is what we have. So we have C and D and A, B, C and D. Good, these are the supported models. So now to check which are stable, all we have to do is, we know the stable models are a subset of the supported models, so we have to see whether C, A, D and A, B, C, D are stable models. And for this, it's enough to check if they satisfy the loop formulas because the stable models are the supported models that satisfy the loop formulas. So this is telling us that if A or B are in the set, then E must be also in the set. So in this case, A or, A or B are not there. So then this passes the test. This satisfies the loop formula because it only imposes a condition for the case where A or B are there. So then we are good. But for this one, A or B are there. In fact, both are there, but E is not here. So then this set does not satisfy this formula. Hence, it's not a stable. Good. And then basically this, uh, this, uh, concludes the, the exercise. And of course, what you could do now here is come and check with the program to see may using this more standard technique to check whether this is the, this is the stable model you would find here. And let's, let's do it. So we don't have the, let's do it now just for you to show you, but maybe you're already sure that this is the stable model and you don't want to do this, but I just do it because I like it. So F cannot belong to a stable model, then D belongs to a stable model. So there's no way I can derive the A here. And here I have the D and not E, hence I derive the C. And now here, given that I don't have the E, this rule cannot be fired. And now, okay, I don't have the, the F, so I can delete it from there and the C is true. So then we are just left with this A, if B, B, if A, and then I know there's no way that I can derive them. So then both must be four, right? And basically this, there's no way that I can derive it. It's basically what we have, uh, you can read it from here that says that to have A or B, I must have the E, but the E I cannot have it, hence there's no way to derive A or B. But the way we are re in a way representing this is with the loop formula. All right, good. So this was all for the exercise. I hope you have understood it, you have enjoyed it, and then see you in another video. Ciao!